good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Kamal Brown. I'm a project sales engineer with Phoenix Contact. Um, thanks for, for joining us this morning. And we're going to be discussing uh, power reliability um, with a focus around our power supplies and UPSs. Um, for those who may not be familiar, on the screen now is actually our global headquarters. Um, we're based in Blomberg, Germany, uh, with our U.S. headquarters being he, being in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, so just wanted to let you know uh, kind of what was on the screen there. All right. So at Phoenix Contact, we are a manufacturer of instrumentation and control uh, components and solutions. Uh, we manufacture over 60,000 different part numbers. Okay, so uh, with that being said, we do we break our, our, our products down into a number of groups. Um, as you can see, it ranges from uh, control, with that being our industrial PCs, HMIs, PLCs, um, and IO solutions, uh, power reliability, uh, connectivity, shop floor productivity, networking and remote connectivity, Ethernet IP and Profinet solutions, um, and, and safety. Uh, for the purposes of today's conversation, we're going to be focusing on uh, our power reliability solutions. Okay. So again, when we talk power reliability, um, we're talking our power supplies and UPS um, offering, uh, surge protection and circuit protection, um, power distribution, and monitoring metering. Okay. So today's uh, conversation again is, is going to focus primarily on the power supplies and UPSs, um, but just wanted to to give a, a quick blurb, letting you guys know that um, when we're talking about power reliability, it's very very important that you, that you don't forget the basics. Okay, um, when you're talking about having a, a reliable bus to to power your control system, um, to power uh, your applications, um, you want to make sure you're doing a number of things. Um, for that power to be reliable, you're going to have to have some kind of protection on it um, from over voltage and over currents. Uh, you, go, you might want to have to do some monitoring on that on that system so that way you can ensure that you're getting uh, the power that you're expecting out of your system. Uh, and of course, you're going to have to be do some, doing some distribution um, to those other end devices that 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 are in that uh, that are in that cabinet. So again, talking about the pillars of, of, of power reliability, um, Phoenix Contact offers solutions uh, under all these pillars. Um, just wanted to make sure that everybody is aware that when we're talking specifically about the, the power supplies and UPSs, I uh, want to make sure that it's uh, in the light of an overall solution um, on, on reliable power, okay? So again, when we're talking about monitoring, whether that's voltage or current transducers, energy meters, monitoring relays, um, protection, when we talk about circuit breakers, um, surge protection uh, for both, not just power, but as well as um, signals, um, coax and telecommunication cables. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're, we're covering all of our basis uh, when we're talking about um, protection and monitoring. Um, but we're gonna dive right in here and get started on our conversation uh, around conversion. All right, so when we're talking conversion, we're specifically uh, referencing AC and DC power supplies, DC to DC converters, redundancy modules, UPS and battery backup. Um, we're not going to spend too much time uh, on the DC to DC converters or redundancy as a part of this conversion application. Um, again, most of our time is going to be spent uh, talking about the AC to DC power supplies. Um, and the UPS battery backup. All right, so what does conversion mean to us um, as far as power supplies? We're talking about converting from AC to DC power. Um, we're making sure that we're converting, regulating, amplifying, or isolating that DC power. Uh, so for example, just going from 120 to 24. Um, creating redundant power supplies applications, um, but more importantly, talking about uh, the UPS and battery backup for critical for critical applications. So 
So getting into our power supply families, um, we have three main families that we focus on for our power supply offering. Um, that being Uno, which is pictured uh, all the way on the left. Uh, can you guys see my mouse when I'm moving it around on the screen just so I know that you can see what I'm pointing to? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, so the Uno power supply, uh, which is gonna be for, for basic applications. Um, a trio power supply, which we'll get into, is gonna give you a little bit um, more of a power boost um, as far as the reserve cap capability. Um, and then we'll get into the Quint, which is basically the, the premium line of the power supply families. Um, so if you're looking at it, you would say good, better, better going from Uno up to Quint being the premium, the premium line, giving you the most uh, feature rich of the, of the solutions. Okay, so let's get into our AC and DC power supplies. All right, so starting off with the, the Uno power, um, right off the bat, especially when you're looking at it in comparison to the, to, to the Trio and Quint, um, you can see one of the big differences is, is the size. Um, so when you're talking about the size of the module, you are getting, um, it is pretty compact. You're getting some space savings in there, um, but it's ideal, ideally suited for basic power applications. Um, you don't need any diagnostics. You're not looking to, you don't need necessarily a, a large amount of power reserve. Um, you're looking to get clean, steady, consistent power to your application, um, particularly for single phase applications, all right? So with the Uno power supply line, uh, it goes up to 20 amps. Um, and again, dealing with the compact form factor here. Now, with the Uno, like with our, our other power supplies, it does still have the industrial ratings. Um, so, it, and it is still, uh, it does have uh, environmental ratings as well. So it has wide temperature range. So you're going from, you know, minus 25 up to 70 degrees C. Uh, but it does, it just has a small feature set. Um, so you're going to get a, a LED light right on the front of the module itself. That's going to let you know your DC uh, is okay. You have um, a good AC input or DC output on the on the power supply, um, and it's cost effective. All right, so it's our most cost effective power solution. In the Uno line, there is no earth ground um, connection required. Uh, some of the benefits of not having the earth ground is that um, there's no shock or safety hazard there. Uh, there's an immunity from, from outside uh, surges. Uh, also, it's electrically quiet um, design. So there's very, very low noise um, from the UNO power supply itself. Uh, and also, again, because it has that immunity from outside influences, uh, it has some oversized internal components to, to help make it a little bit more rugged and robust. But again, when we're looking at the UNO power supply, we're looking at basic applications, all right? Um, so some of the markets that we see UNO is used in quite a bit, um, lighting and HVAC control, traffic signage, traffic light control, um, gas pumps. Uh, so again, when you're just looking to get some basic power, uh, you don't need any particular reserve capacity, um, and you don't need much diagnostics coming off of that, off of that bus. Uh, the UNO is, is an excellent option, especially when if you're looking to save some space in the cabinet. Any questions on the UNO? All right, we'll move right along. Okay, so we'll go from compact and basic, and now we'll step up to go and review the, the trio power, the trio power line, okay? So when we step up to the to the trio family, um, as the applications demand more power and functionality, uh, that's when we move into the trio family. Um, so one of the big differences right off the bat, where the Uno was only single phase, if you run into three phase applications, um, this is when you want to start considering the trio the trio line. Uh, so the trio can go up to uh, 40 amps 
on uh, on the three phase, um, I think 20 amps on the single phase applications. Uh, it also has a DC OK indication, that little light on the front letting you know that you do have uh, you do have a DC output but it also has a remote signaling contact for that DC OK. So now each of you not only can you see it locally, if you need to wire that into a, a PLC or SCADA system, um, you can have that option to be able to get that remote signaling as well. The terminations on the TRIO line are, are use our push in connection technology. So if you're using, uh, so for, for the wire termination, uh, you don't necessarily have to, um, you can just push the wire right in to terminate. If you're using solid wire, if you're using stranded, and you can just actuate that spring before inserting the wire. But for faster, um, equip, faster connections for installation um, is the purpose of those push-in connections. Also, the trio has what we call a dynamic power boost. Um, so again, the difference from stepping from the Uno to the trio is that you get a little bit more power reserve uh, capacity in the supply itself. Um, so the power, the dynamic power boost on the trio line will give you up to 150% of the nominal current rated for that power supply for up to five seconds. So what does that mean? So, so if you're using a 10 amp power supply, it can supply up to 15 amps for five seconds, okay? Um, so that's important, it's particularly important when you're starting up um, kind of power hungry loads uh, and making sure that you still have that, that, reliable, that reliability um, in, those, in those particular situations. The trio also be, also has um, some pretty high uh, shock and vibe resistance on it as well. Uh, so something to keep in mind depending on the application that you're getting into. So where we see uh, trio power supplies being used um, a lot in our infrastructure markets, so smart grid and tunnel and bridge lighting. Um, very popular amongst machine builders, so conveyor systems and material handling, um, but also power generation, um, so turbine control uh, and solar arrays as well. All right, any questions on the, the trio line before we move into the, the Cadillac of the power supplies, the Quint series? All right, we'll dive right into the Quint here. Come on, hold on one thing. Yep. So we you still don't have a 24 volt AC to DC converter yet, correct? No, okay. we do not have the, the, the AC to DC converter. A 24 okay. volt input on the AC side to 20, 24 volt DC, we do not have, no. Right. Thank you. No problem. Okay, we'll dive into the quit here. All right, so uh, your Quint, uh, the Quint power line is going to be the, the most feature which uh, of, the, of the power supply series. Um, it's going to give you the most power reserve um, as well as the most diagnostic capabilities on the, on the power supply lines, okay? So this again is going to be um, for critical power applications. Again, here we're talking about single and three phase uh, options. Um, up to 960 watts output. Um, and again, you have this contacts on it for, for diagnostic purposes that can be analog, digital, or relay monitoring contacts. All right. Now, from a power reserve standpoint, um, it has three things that make it quite unique um, that being the static power, dynamic power, and SFD technology. And I'll go into um, a chart showing kind of what, a little bit of what that is. Um, something also to keep in mind on the Quint line, if you're ever in applications where you need a special classification, you need something, um, I don't know how, how often you guys get into conformally coded applications where you need something like that or classroom division two or anything kind of special requirements from an environmental, environmental rating standpoint, um, but Quint probably would, would have the, the ratings that you need for that particular application. Okay, so now we're going to get into the different types of power reserve capabilities that the Quint line has. 
So a normal operation um, will, you know, nominal current uh, is what we're seeing here. It's just powering this industrial PC or HMI. Um, so standard normal operation. The static boost is up is the quincibility to survive up to 125% of nominal current indefinitely. So when we were looking at the trio line, it can provide that that uh, dynamic boost for five seconds of 150% of the capacity. When we're looking at the quint line, it can actually provide a static boost. So it's a permanent increase in loading. Um, so if you have a 10 amp power supply, you're looking at it can provide 12 and a half amps indefinitely, okay? Uh, where this comes in handy is, you know, you designed a system five years ago when everything everything on the, was under the load requirement of that power supply. Uh, maybe you came in or had a customer come in and had, had, had to have some modifications made to their system. They added a load onto their system and now instead of that system pulling, you know, eight and a half amps, now it's pulling nine and a half, ten amps, and you're reaching that upper limit of the power supply. The good thing about the Quint series is that wouldn't be an issue at all because again, that 10 amp power supply can supply up to 12 and a half amps indefinitely. What you would get though is an, a, a diagnostic notification saying that you are or you are in a power boost um, situation. So again, here additional load on the on the uh, on the on the DC bus, and it's not an issue. You'll provide 125 to 20, 125 percent of that nominal current rating. Now the Quint line also has the capability of having that dynamic power boost. Um, so on the dynamic power boost on the Quint line, what it allows it to do is to provide up to 200% of the nominal rating for up to five seconds. So you're talking about starting a motor or a pump or something that's gonna be a, a you know current hungry load. Um, you have that power reserve capability in your power supply to be able to get that done with no issues or, or worrying about having any kind of harm happen to that DC bus. Now, the last and um, what I think is from a reliability standpoint, one of the most important features of the Quint power supply line is the uh, selective fuse breaking. Um, that's the SFB, which you see right down here on the chart. It's SFB capability. So what we're showing here is if you have a load that has a short circuit on it, the Quint power supply has enough power to trip a downstream circuit breaker so that way your entire DC bus doesn't drop out. In normal applications where you don't, where your power supply doesn't have that reserve capability, if you get a short on a load downstream, it, it takes you know, six times the nominal current for a circuit breaker to trip. If your power supply can't provide that to trip that downstream breaker, what it'll do is it'll, it'll go back into a power save mode and actually drop out your DC bus and it'll crowbar. So that way the power supply itself doesn't, doesn't get hurt, but your DC bus is no longer active. What this SFB technology allows you to do is actually pulse out six times that nominal current in order to trip a downstream breaker. So now instead of your entire DC bus dropping out, all you're, all you're losing is that one particular load that had the short circuit um, that had that short circuit. So your, your bus remains up and active, you just lose that one particular load and your power supply is still safe and operating normally um, versus all your loads dropping out near power supply and out into kind of a safe, your crowbar mode. Any questions around the power reserve capabilities of the Quint line? All right. I, I have a question. Do you have to okay. program that into the Quint that it has that circuit breaker down there, or is it assuming that it does? Um, it's it's assuming that it does have that that downstream breaker. Okay. And we actually have uh, circuit breakers. We call our SFB breakers. So if you are using um, quick power supplies in your applications and you do have some critical loads that you want to protect, 
uh, we have SFB breakers whose trip curve is actually uh, designed and suited to work in line in conjunction with the the Quint power supplies. While it'll, it'll work with any breaker, essentially these breakers are optimized to be used with the with the Quint power supply. So if any any of those kind of applications come up, uh, please let us know. We'd be happy to help. All right. So in addition to the power reserve capability that you get from the Quint line, um, you also get some uh, advantages from preventative monitoring and diagnostics that the, the power supply is able to provide. Okay. So the uh, you can use near field communication. Uh, so there's an NFC chip on the front of the, uh, the power supply that you can use to um, configure how you want some of this preventative monitoring information to, to be done. Um, now that can be done. There's a, what looks like a, a hockey puck that can attach to a USB uh, to plug into your laptop, and you can use that to, to on the on the power supply itself. Or if you have a Android device, uh, Android phone, uh, with the NF, well, you can download the app from the from the Play Store and actually do it um, through your Android smartphone as well. So what's being shown right here is the default settings. Um, oh, I'm sorry about that. Let me go back. But again, the things that you're able to monitor, voltage, current, power, um, as well as operating hours. Um, so you can actually set set points on your operating hours uh, so, so you can get an alarm signal uh, when that power supply has been in operation for that set number of hours. Um, you can also get a pre-warning or derating. Um, so you can give you a signal when the power supply has reached um, a set 60 degrees Celsius. At 60 degrees Celsius, uh, the power supply may begin to derate. Um, so that's not a that's not a setting that can be changed or manipulated. Uh, so when it said when we say derate, so for the uh, power boost features of the Quint, that's when you would start seeing some derating. So if you were talking about I have a 10 amp power supply, and my system is drawing uh, 11 and a half amps worth of load. In normal operation, that's fine, not a problem. The Quint will handle that all day long. Now, when the, the temperature in that cabinet starts creeping up, it gets to 60 degrees C, you'll start to see some derating in the power supply. Um, so that's something that you want to that you want to be notified about. Um, so that's something that you can you can program in to to, to get alarmed about from the preventative monitoring um, on the on the device itself. Um, it also has built-in overvoltage protection. Uh, so you can have it give you a signal that the over at an over voltage event uh, may have converted, may have occurred, um, and your, out, your power supply is output at 32 volts DC. All right. And then lastly, you have the input voltage. Okay. So again, some of the configuration options that you can have as far as things that you will want to get from diagnostics of your of your power supply. All right, any questions on diagnostics or power reserve on the quints? All right, we'll keep chugging along here. So we also have a low wattage version of the Quint line. So you need that reliability of the Quint. You need some of those uh, permanent and static boosts um, that it provides, but you need it at a lower wattage. Uh, we do have uh, basically 1.3, 2.5, and 3.8 amp versions of the Quint. Um, so one, they're going to be much more compact. Um, you're not going to have the uh, selective fuse breaking feature uh, to be able to trip downstream breakers. Um, it's not going to have the NFC for, for diagnostics or analog output options um, with the configurable digital outputs. It's not going to have the gas discharge tube. So it's not going to be the fully feature rich of the higher wattage um, packages, uh, but it's particularly for 
hey, I have a low wire jack location, but hey, I might need some static boost or dynamic power boost to go along with that. Um, it can let you know, uh, again, output voltage uh, or power from a single monitoring standpoint, um, but you're not going to get the level of diagnostics that you would from the, from the previous, uh, the large quint form factor. Okay. Got out of order a bit here, excuse me, let me slide back through. And excuse me, this is my, my first time presenting on, on Zoom, so I'm still getting a little used to the format here. Okay. So that was um, our AC and DC power supplies. Um, we're now going to move into our UPS and battery backup. Come on. Hi. Uh, yes. Do, do, do you have anything on the step power? Uh, no, I, I don't have anything on the step power here. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll do that another time. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So for UPSs, um, when we talk UPSs, we're talking uh, smaller UPSs for backing up a, a control cabinet. Um, most of our solutions are DIN rail mountable um, as well as UL rated. Uh, so we're not talking about large UPSs trying to back up an entire um, building or facility or something like that. It's, it's local to that, to that control cabinet backing up some critical loads for anywhere from a couple minutes for a, a backup generator to kick on at a building, maybe up to uh, you know, a couple of hours. But this isn't, this isn't something that we're looking at backing up the system for days or anything like that. It's, it's uh, backing up critical loads for you know, minutes to hours type application. Okay. So we're gonna talk again uh, across the lines of Uno, Trio, and Quint uh, for, the UPS, uh, for the UPS applications. Now, when we talk our UPS, from a UNO standpoint, um, very limited from, from, from a UPS standpoint, but it's again, very low power requirement. So you're talking about a 60, 60 watt UPS. Um, it's actually a UPS and battery integrated into the same housing. Um, so pretty much all you do is attach a, a power supply to the front of this and you have a, a basic little UPS system that you can use to back up the cabinet, um, maybe for a couple of minutes. Um, Batteries easily be easily replaceable right from this front fold down flap right here. And it's not like it's Phoenix Contact branded batteries, they're standard uh, Panasonic batteries that you can pick up from, from your local Batteries Plus or something like that. Now, when we get into the trio line, um, this is when we see our. Uh, one of our AC UPSs, uh, so the one here is the Trio AC UPS uh, that can again that can be either um, 230 volt or 120 volt. Uh, it is 700 VA output and delivers a pure sine wave. That pure sine wave is very very important uh, when you're talking about backing up uh, critical loads that would need a UPS. You definitely want to make sure that whatever UPS you're using is going to give you that that pure sine wave output. Um, a lot of times, some of the UPSs that are that are used in some applications, they give what they call a modified sine wave um, or step sine wave. And with that, and then what that is is actually um, instead of it being pure, so it's a perfect curve, um, it actually looks like just how it sounds like a step. Um, so at each of those vertical points on that step, um, you can introduce transients into your system. So it's not anything that you know, might, might damage your system once or twice, but it's, the, it's a death by a thousand cuts um, kind of philosophy where you're introducing a lot of small transients into your system by not having that pure sine wave output, but by having that moderate, modified sine wave output, um, maybe you might not have an issue the first or second time it happens, but maybe the, the fifth or sixth time, um, you might have something go wrong and you're not sure why, um, that, that could be a cause. 
So when we're looking at this AC UPS uh, has an integrated uh, battery, um, uh, as well as a quick and easy battery replacement. So again, right on the front is where you'd be replacing the battery. It also has uh, uses the push into connection technology for uh, for your for your terminations. Um, it has a USB interface or safe shutdown or remote safe shutdown. So if you have this connected to an industrial PC, um, you don't want obviously you wouldn't want that industrial PC just you know losing power. So it can perform a safe shutdown on that uh, if it's connected to that via the USB port. All right. Getting into our Trio DC UPS, um, this is actually uh, one of my favorite products. Just, I think it's well, it's one of my favorite products because one of its size. Um, so you're getting a UPS and a power supply in one housing. Um, so again, it's going to be able to shrink your cabinet down a little bit, um, save some save some space. Um, it comes in both single and three phase versions. Um, so you have a five and a ten amp version um, in the single phase and 20 amp version in the three phase. Again, it's util utilizing the push and connection technology uh, with a USB interface right on the front. Uh, and one thing that's important to note here, um, and we'll go, we'll touch on this a little bit more later, is that all you would need to do is add a battery to this. Again, so it has that UPS and power supply built in to the same housing. You would just need, need to add a battery based on what your backup time requirements are uh, for your system, okay? And I'll show you how that selection is done uh, in a couple of slides. All right. Um, so again, moving from the Uno to the Trio, now from the Trio to the Quint UPS. Um, again, the Quint line is always gonna be the one that gives you your most uh, diagnostic and power reserve for the, for the application. Um, so when you're looking at your Quint UPS, it's going to be for your critical applications where not only are you looking to back up a system, but you're also looking to, again, get some diagnostics out of that system. So uh, again, it's going to be able to give you a number of different diagnostics via a number of different protocols. Um, so how is it doing that? If you're looking at the system over here on the right, on the left, you have the power supply. In the middle, you have the UPS. On the right-hand side, you have your battery backup. If you look at the connections between the UPS and the battery, uh, you'll have your positive, your negative, and then that third wire is actually a communication cable coming over from the battery to the UPS, which is, which is, which is where that diagnostic information is coming from, okay? So on the quint line of UPSs, uh, it has what we call uh, IQ technology. The IQ technology um, is going to be what's giving you the state of charge, the state of health. Um, it'll let you know what the remaining backup time is uh, in, in minutes, so that buffer time that you have left on the based on the battery charge level. Um, it'll let you know what the remaining service life is of that, of that battery in months. So some industries that we work in um, one of the issues and complaints that we heard is that when UPSs were used, they didn't necessarily know when the batteries had to be replaced until the UPS was needed. So they'd lose power, the UPS wouldn't kick in, and then that's when they knew, oh, we had bad batteries that had to be replaced. So this was um, in an effort to mitigate those issues. So that way now, instead of, you know, replacing battery just because they've been installed somewhere for a year or they were needed and you didn't and you didn't know they needed to be replaced. Um, now you can put them on a maintenance schedule saying, hey, I know I have two and a half, three months left on this battery. Next time I'm out of this cabinet, let me take a spare battery with me so I can do that replacement. And again, replacing the batteries on these UPSs, they're hot swappable um, and the battery cover is just is, is easily removable. I'll show you what that looks like in a couple slides. Additionally, um, we have a couple of different battery technologies, um, the standard being valve-regulated lead acid. Uh, we have a wide temperature range on the valve-regulated uh, lead acid, and then also lithium-ion um, batteries as well, which is a little bit uh, more expensive. But 
when you, a battery is attached to the Quint UPS, that third cable, in addition to giving it diagnostics, it will also allow the, the Quint UPS to recognize the battery type. So the type of, uh, type of battery, whether it's lead acid or lithium ion, that's attached to that, that UPS, and it will optimize uh, the charge time for that battery um, based on the technology that's connected. Any questions so far on the Quint UPS? Okay, moving right along here. So with the Quint UPS, um, it has actually ethernet ports on the bottom so you can connect it into your automation or control network. Those Ethernet ports allow it to talk Ethernet IP, uh, Profinet, EtherCAT, um, and the Ethernet IP version can also talk Modbus. Okay, uh, there's a two-port switch on the bottom of the UPS uh, where you will be able to get that Ethernet connection. Um, in addition to it being able, to, it being able to talk these various uh, programming languages uh, and protocols, it also comes with the PLC configuration files as well as the HMI visualization files, so you then bring that into your automation system. Uh, lastly, there's a version um, that doesn't have a uh, RJ45 port, it just has a USB port. Um, if you just wanted to connect it to an industrial PC and you didn't necessarily need the industrial communications that go along with it. So that was all for the uh, the DC side of the Quint power supplies. We do also have um, two options for uh, Quint AC UPS, um, that being a 500 VA or a 1K VA uh, AC UPS option on the 1K VA UPS. Um, it doesn't have the full IQ technology to give you a state of charge, state of health, um, but again, it still delivers the pure sine wave. Um, it has that USB interface that allows you to uh, integrate it and connect it to an industrial PC to perform a safe shutdown on the system uh, in case of loss of power. Um, it can also be switched in parallel um, for redundancy and increased performance, um, and that's what that port is all the way on the right hand side here. Um, you can actually start it up from the energy storage system. So you can start it up off of a battery. You don't necessarily need a line power to have it start up. Uh, as you can see, it has the diagnostic ports on the top to be able to get you some basic diagnostics out of the system. Um, and lastly, again, that's that USB interface if you need to be able to connect it to a, a industrial PC. On the uh, 500 VA option. Again, it is going to have that IQ technology, so it'll give you that state of health. Um, it'll give you the current state of charge of the battery. It'll let you know what the remaining backup time is um, on the battery system. Um, and one thing that you're seeing here, a lot of times when we're uh, talking about our uh, our UPS offering offering for for the AC side, uh, one of the things that we do is we make the the backup time that you need modular so it doesn't come with the on it doesn't come with the batteries on board but based on the the backup time that you need you size the battery appropriately um, we'll see what that looks like here in a second all right so now going into the energy storage so being able to size out a system based on the runtime that you need All right, so as I mentioned, we offer a number of different um, battery technologies, whether that's um, a capacitive lithium ion, valve regulated lead acid, or the VLRA wide temp. And it's all going to depend on what you're trying to back up, uh, how critical is it, what's the environment that you're using. And we'll talk about uh, the selection process of how you actually get that done. 
Now, when you're talking about the capacitive batteries, that's going to give you the the max the maximum service life. Um, and it's using actually maintenance free double layer capacitors. Capacitors. When you're talking about the lithium ion batteries, um, it's a long service life with long buffer, buffer times. Um, and it's using lithium ion technology, but it's so that's going to make it a little bit um, a little bit more pricey. When you're looking at the VRLA, um, that's pretty much what we see used most commonly. Uh, it's going to give you the the maximum buffer time at the extreme tips when you look when you're talking about the wide tip version. So a lot of times when we're looking at cabinets, one of the uh, if you're talking about different environments, one of the the limit limitations on a cabinet as far as temperature ratings go um, might be the batteries. Um, so that's one of the reasons that we wanted to make. Uh, that wide temperature range on the vibe like related that acid. So again, as you can see, that goes from minus, tw minus 25 up to 60 degrees C. So again, these are maintenance friendly uh, energy storage units. Um, the battery is uh, easily accessible um, via the, the, the trap door um, on the front. Essentially, it's, it has quick connection tabs right on the front of the batteries themselves. So once you disconnect those tabs, you can pull the battery right out um, and replace it. They're hot swappable. Um, the, so batteries, depending on the size, they'll have panel mount tabs if you just want to mount it right on the enclosure itself. Um, a lot of them up to uh, the only ones that aren't are the 38 amp hour, which you'll see in the second slide or the next slide. Uh, those are the only ones that would have to go on the shelf or on the floor. Um, but those weren't those won't be able to be thin row mountable just because of the size. So now when you're talking about actually going in and doing your battery selection for your system, what does that look like? Right? Excuse me for a second. What does that look like? So again, we have these color-coded tabs here that you're able to select the battery that you need based on the color code. So right here, I'm looking at backing up a 20 amp system for six minutes, all right? It's gonna let me know, hey, I need the 120 watt hour lithium ion battery. Um, so that's what it's gonna be selected. Uh, sorry. The same thing goes for, uh, you know, the DLRA batteries. Again, I'm looking at backing up a seven amp system for one hour. It's going to say, all right, I need the red coated battery. That's going to give me the 12 amp hour battery for that particular application. So again, it lets you go in, select what your load, what your load current is for your application, find out what kind of buffer time you need, and then you'll be able to identify the battery uh, code, color code corresponding to that application. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? All right, great. So Kamal, I have a question about um, just a website with this. Do they have access to that selector that you have on the website or is it just us through our extranet? Uh, no, so this, uh, this color code is actually available in, um, in the brochure. Right, uh, right. So but I, can, I can, you know, send you a link so you can download it so that that PDF is downloadable right from the website. I can send you a link to where you can get that. Uh, I believe we also we have a configurator as well on our website where you can, in, like, instead of looking at this chart, you can input your uh, your requirements and they'll um, let you know what you would need based on that that input requirement that you filled out in the configurator. Right. So the guys that are on that are that are not you know, associated with Brody, but our customers, do they have access to that online tool or would we have to do that for them? Uh, they have access to that. That configurator is, is, is right on our, our home website and I can okay. send you a link, I can send you a link for distribution for that, uh, for that afterwards, George, if that's okay. Yeah, we should put together just a little package and I can send out to everybody who was on. Yeah, uh, definitely. I can put together a PDF of these slides um, as well as the, the, the brochure that covers this, this information. Um, and then a link to that configurator. So I can get that over to you this afternoon, George. All right, sounds great, thanks. No problem. All right, um, so this is going through, again, 
same color code selection process. Uh, the previous was for the Quint. This is for the, the Trio DC UPS. Um, so again, you want a 10 amp, uh, you have a 10 amp load, we're trying to back up for 10 minutes, 3.4 amp battery would be what was, what's required for that application. Um, so same color code uh, situation applies for the 1 kVA uh, AC UPS. When you're seeing that one plus one, that means it's actually two batteries um, that's being used for this for, the, for this backup. So uh, we're looking at backing up 400 watts for 50 minutes. We'd be using two of the 12 amp hour batteries um, tied into that AC UPS. Similar concept here um, for Okay, so this is for the VLRA, and uh, this is for capacitive and lithium ion. Um, same concept using the color code to identify what battery that we would need. Um, and again, 500 VA UPS. So again, what I'm trying to emphasize here is for all of our UPSs, we have this color coding chart to be able to identify what battery that you would need for that for that specified uh, backup time. Okay, so that's our energy storage for the battery backup. Yeah. So we talked about conversion with the power supplies and the uh, UPS with the battery backup. Um, but one of the most important parts of, of a power system as well is not just necessarily getting that power to the cabinet and into the cabinet reliably, but also how you are you distributing that power within the cabinet itself, right? Um, so Phoenix Contact was actually founded um, and invented the first DIN rail mount terminal block. So terminal connections and connection technology is one of our core competencies. Um, it's something that we pride ourselves in quite a bit. So we have a lot of different ways for you to actually utilize some of that technology to distribute power throughout your cabinet, okay? Um, so when you're talking about power distribution, uh, we have a number of different ways that you can do that. Um, the reliability and the connections uh, doesn't have to come at a sacrifice of product ranges and options. So uh, just because you don't necessarily want to use terminal blocks, we have a, a bunch of other ways for you to be able to get that done. Um, Phoenix Contact literally has thousands of ways for you to distribute power, um, all built in and around high quality connections. Okay. So being shown here, there's just some thin rail blocks. We're going to go through and just look at a couple of different ways that we're able to do this, okay? Uh, so again, you can use your standard terminal blocks, or you can do modular power distribution, what we call our, our PT fix line. So what the PT fix line is, allows you to do is, is the latest innovation from Phoenix. Um, it's built using our proven PT technology. So that pushing connection that we were seeing on the Quint and the Trio power supplies, is the same connection technology that's being used here in this power distribution. Um, this modular power distribution system offers truly scalable and customizable um, distribution system. And as you can see, you have a number of different mounting options, um, whether that's horizontal or vertical right on the DIN rail, um, or actually mounted directly on the panel itself. Um, As you can see, there's no uh, bridging required. Um, all the bridging is done internally. Um, uh, for, the, for the panel mount versions, we have versions that can just be uh, adhesively applied to the panel, um, or you can actually have screw down um, on the panel itself. Uh, again, if you want to use DIN rail, we have the options to mount that both vertically or horizontally. As you can see, we have 11 different color codes that you can use. So if you want to be able to, you know, chain tell between your, your hot and your neutral, tell between your, your 24 and your 120, whatever the case may be, we have 
a, a lot of different color coded options that you can use to be able to, to be able to get that done and make your panel easily identifiable as far as what power is going to where and what's being used where. Uh, we have them available with and without a feed-in terminal. Um, so that feed-in terminal, if you're looking at the mouse, will kind of be this top terminal up here. So say you bring in your, your 24 volt um, in here, and then you're distributing into these different uh, internally bridged uh, connection points. Um, so both with and without feed-in terminals are available. One of the big things here is when you're trying to uh, distribute power in a cabinet, but also save some space in the cabinet, um, these are very, very, very compact, uh, and they can take a, quite a quite a wide range of wire sizes. So it gives you that ability to easily distribute power, um, color code, so it's easily visible as far as where you're distributing and what you're distributing, um, as well as the modularity that you would need. Uh, so to give you an idea, we have two, six, 12, and 18 point terminal options uh, for cross sections from anywhere from uh, one and a half millimeter squared up to four millimeter squared. Um, and then feed in cross sections from four and a half millimeter squared up to 10 and a half millimeter squared. So quite a wide range of feed in options that you can get on the on the on the connections for these for the for the PC6 modules. So if you want something that's a, a another type of power distribution module that we have um, is a little bit what we call our, our PDMs. So we have them both in screw technology as well as push-in, okay? Um, and for these, as you can see, you bring your, your power um, right into the top and then you can distribute it right to the channels here. Uh, one of the benefits here is if you're talking about using uh, redundant power inputs, um, this gives you the this gives you the ability to again bring in redundant power inputs um, to feed through your your power distribution bus. All right, um, again, great for high density applications. Um, there's no assembly required for it. It's all it just comes as one part number. You just snap right onto the onto the foot of the DIN rail. Uh, again, it makes distributing 24 120 significantly easier. I think all you're doing is snapping onto the DIN rail, and then it gives you the um, two potentials for up to 24 circuits. Uh, so we have these in different sizes depending on how many termination points that you need. And again, they have them in both PT and screw connection. Uh, and again, it's it's compact as far as how it actually fits on the on the DIN rail as well. Now, another way to can distribute power um, throughout your cabinet, uh, and I think this is uh, especially good when you're talking about have, being able to distribute power as well as save space on your DIN rail. Uh, we have our electronic circuit breakers, where each channel on the device is actually a configurable circuit breaker. So we're showing um, four and eight channel versions here. But then again, it allows you to bring in uh, your main feed and then distribute that to from four to eight different loads up to eight different loads um, throughout your cabinet. So you might have, you know, loads one and two uh, need a three amp breaker, loads four and five need a five amp breaker, and uh, loads six and seven uh, only need a, you know, two amp breaker. You can have each of those channels individually configurable um, and it just gives you an easy way to kind of do that. So now instead of trying to have you know, three different types of fuse, fuses that your, your, your technicians have to keep um, on them. Now it's a matter of, instead of having to do all that fusing, you can just do that via electronic so you can break it in to imply it or to get that kind of protection in your cabinet. Um, we also have these in uh, class two variants, so NEC class two. So if you have current limiting circuits that you need to distribute power to, um, this, is a good, this is a good way to be able to do that. Um, we have these again in a couple of different variants. So uh, a number of ways we can distribute power uh, throughout the cabinet. And then lastly, we have um, you know, the DIN rail outlets. Uh, so when you're talking about having to come and you need 
uh, GFI receptacles um, for maintenance or technicians to be able to come in and get you know, access to 120 uh, for devices, their laptop or whatever they need to power up. Uh, we have both single and duplex um, out, outlets. Um, again, a real simple installation. They just mount right onto the DIN rail itself. Um, and easy wire terminations that are already labeled um, right on the devices themselves. All right, I think it's taking me back through, but. Okay. Um, lastly, wanted to wrap up here. So uh, we talked about all of our, uh, a lot of our different power supplies and UPS solutions. Uh, one thing that I, I definitely want to make everyone aware of is that we do offer a limited lifetime warranty on all these products. So if you protect um, our power supply with our surge protection, you'll get a limited lifetime warranty, not just on that power supply and surge protection, but any uh, powered Phoenix contact electronic behind that, you'll get a limited lifetime warranty on as well. So if you're using um, a quick power supply or you know trio power supply, you protect it with a, a surge protection device. And then if you use one of those electronic circuit breakers behind it to distribute your power, anything happens to that electronic circuit breaker, it's covered under the limited lifetime warranty. And that goes for all the electronics that will be behind that power supply. Um, so it's something that's very important to keep in mind. Uh, the way the lifetime works, it's a very simple registration that you submit. Um, essentially, it's your name, company, and email. Um, again, when, you, when you're when uh, you purchasing your power supply, your equipment, make sure that it's installed in accordance with our recommendations, that being the surge protection on the front end of it. And then again, make sure all electronics are powered and protected with the appropriate uh, Phoenix Contact power supply and surge protection. Um, so again, I'll have uh, this information um, available after the presentation that I'll get over to George to be able to distribute out um, to customers of interest. But just so you see what we talk about, Phoenix Contact has surge protection for um, power, measurement and control, data and communications, and antenna cables. Um, so we can protect the entire solution uh, from you know over voltage and transients and specifically um, this is device this is the device that you'll be putting in front of a power supply in order to uh, get it wrapped into that lifetime warranty so I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that um, and had the ability to to take advantage of it so again in summary Phoenix contact does a whole heck of a lot um, but Today, we focus specifically on our power supplies and UPS offering um, with the brief commercial uh, there on some of the surge protection as it relates to the limited lifetime warranty. Uh, again, my name is Kamal Brown. Any questions or comments you guys might have, feel free to reach out. Uh, thanks for your time and attention. And I'll get these slides over to George, um, as well as a link for the configurator and selector guide uh, for further review. All right, great, Kamal. I appreciate it. <clears throat> No problem. Thank you. Anybody have any you questions? Up, sure. Yep. Yep. Anybody have any questions or anything? If not, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, let us know if we can do anything, quote you on any of this stuff. Uh, again, they have tons and tons of stuff. I think maybe, Kamal, we should set one up for a network. Definitely. Class. So maybe that'll be the next one we'll do. So. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your time.